Okay, welcome back everyone to our second lecture on faith, BC 111. Uh, we're going to uh, take some time just to answer some of the questions and then we will uh, move forward. So there's a question here from Krisha. If we know God has given a clear direction, but our faith gets disturbed as we get scared of unknown and end up taking a different direction, does it mean God will be upset with us? How to fix it and come back in faith? All right. So, you know, uh, sometimes this happens where, you know, because maybe we, uh, we get afraid or scared. We may not go in the way God wants us to go. Um, remember that God is always our Father. He's always our Father. And uh, we may make mistakes, but God is bigger than our mistakes. So it's not like, you know... Uh, that, that's why he's God. And God, we, make, make, we may make mistakes, and God is always bigger than our mistakes. As long as we go back to him and say, God, I'm sorry, I should have gone that way, but I was scared. I didn't want to go. I chose like I went this way. Uh, please get me back on track. He will get us back. Right? So God is bigger than our mistakes. He can fix it. God is greater than time. He can accelerate things. He can make up for lost time. Right? Uh, so God can do that. You know, uh, in Joel chapter 2, I think it's verse 26 or 27, he says, I will restore the years which the locust has eaten. So God can restore time. Our times are in his hands. Psalm 31, verse 15. Our times are in his hands. So he controls that. So the answer to your question, uh, Krisha, is uh, all we need to do is to come back to God. Say, Lord, I know I made a mistake or I didn't do what I was supposed to do, whatever that situation is. We acknowledge that before God. Uh, and now, God, please get me back on track. Uh, and God will do that. You know? uh, sometimes getting back on track may take a little bit of time because uh, it just depends on the situation. You know, uh, but God will restore. God will bring things back. And God is greater than our situation. Okay. I uh, hope that helped. hope that answered your question. All right. Um, okay, I can't hear. I think we need a mic for the class. Okay. Uh, can we exercise our faith practically? Uh, yeah. uh, in a practical way, in ah, uh? okay. Uh, so, can we exercise our faith practically? Uh, so, you mean like as while you are in Bible college? Is that what you're asking, or in this world? Oh. Can we exercise faith practically in this world? All the time. Right? So uh, in every situation, in everything we do in life, you know, we exercise faith practically. So uh, you and I, we... So the question that was asked by one of our students here in class was, can we exercise our faith practically? Right? So I'm just giving an answer to that. So the, the thing is, in every situation, you know, we must choose to act in faith. You know, some, suppose, example. Suppose you're not feeling good. You feel sick in your body. Right? At that moment, two things. One is exercise your faith. And then secondly, you do what you need to do practically. That means, okay, you go lie down or you rest or whatever. You do that practically. You're taking care of your health. You're not uh, pushing your body. But at the same time, you exercise faith. You say, I, in Jesus' name, I speak to this sickness. I command you to leave. My body is a temple of God. So you use your faith. So 
even in a small in a thing like that you're facing with you're faced with sickness you exercise your faith but you do what you have to do also practically because god has given us understanding to take care of our physical bodies now of course there could be big things that you you know you may have to deal with in life you use your faith in every situation example if it comes to money you use your faith for money right or for example uh, okay right now right now um, we are um, uh, okay there was a problem with our central location so we had to find a place so we finally got a place but now i am using my faith i said god we are starting at 8 o'clock service. We're going to do a 10.30 service. I want to see the hall full for both services. So I'm using my faith for that. Right? So practically, right Right now, uh, how, how, how are we going to see the hall full in both services? Well, one is, of course, we have to do our work. That is, we have to go and you know, do all those things. The, the practical side is there. But on the spiritual side, I use my faith. So... Isaiah chapter 60 is a big chapter. So I was meditating it because God said, Arise. So I have to base my faith on the word of God. So I base my faith on Isaiah 60. He said, The Lord will arise on you, his glory will be seen on you. Then people will come, you know. So that's how I, I'm building my faith. This I'm doing during my prayer time. I, in my prayer time, I use that. So, God, I believe I'm going to see the hall full of both services, eight o'clock service. For the, I, think, I want to see the hall full thing. And, and, and then I, I, I'm believing God, say, God, I want, I want to reach one million people in the city of Bangalore. I want to see thousands of churches raised up all across India. So for all those things which are yet to be done, practically, right? I'm using my faith. So like that for so many things that whether there are small things or whether there are big things, we have to use our faith. And so in every in area, while I was a college student, and I, and I can share many stories, but while I was a college student, when I needed money to pay for my tuition, use my faith. When I needed to come out of a difficult situation, use my faith. Uh, when I, I needed to travel on mission trips, uh, I didn't have money to pay for those things. I used my faith. So during my college years, that's how I used to use my faith. You know, for all these practical things I needed uh, from God, so use my faith. Right? Um, and then, you know, so different seasons of life, uh, uh, whatever situation you're facing, you've got to use your faith for those situations. Okay. Um, so uh, there are lots of lots of practical situations where we will have to use our faith. Thanks. Yes, go ahead, Charak. Another question. Okay. Very interesting question. So there's a question here from one of our students in class. He says, uh, can we change God's will by faith? Interesting. Now, it, it so generally, generally speaking, the answer is no. Meaning, uh, when we're talking about God's plan for the human race, God's plan for, you know, for things that he, has, uh, that he wants to do, those are things we cannot change, right? So now we have a lesson, I think, later on called the boundaries or the perimeters of faith. That means what faith cannot do. So faith cannot change God's will. Faith cannot change somebody else's will. That means I cannot use my faith to control another person, you know, uh, because that person's will is, that's independent of my faith. So there are, there are boundaries to faith. We will talk about it you know, in that lesson. So in general, answer is no. God, you know, we cannot control, we cannot change God's will for the human race. We can't do that. But what we do see is that we can we can change God's mind about a matter. For example, suppose a person is uh, is uh, living a very reckless life. And we find this in the Bible, and especially in God's dealing with Israel. God said, I'm going to destroy them. Moses says, God, don't. Please don't. Please forgive. That's okay, Moses, because you're praying, I will forgive them. <laughs> you know? So in that sense, right? even though the people deserved judgment, 
because somebody was praying or interceding, standing before God, God said, because you're praying, because Moses, you're praying, okay, I will not. I'll give another chance. So in that sense, we can do. That's what prayer and intercession will do uh, when we pray for people, intercede for people. But the overall purpose of God, we can't change. The plan of God for the human race, we can. That's the will of God that will be established. But in these matters, the mind of God on certain things, we, God calls us into partnership, and we can do that, especially through intercession and prayer. Okay? All right. Let's see now. Another question here. Surya, um, I am having so much of faith that then prayerful life. What should I have to keep focus, whether on faith or on prayer, for God's reply? Okay, I think I understand the question. The question is, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm having a lot of faith, but maybe, uh, uh, so he's saying faith uh, is stronger than a, the, a life of prayer. Uh, what should I pay attention to? Uh, should I focus on faith or on prayer to get God's answer? Uh, my, uh, you know, here's how I would respond to that question. See, all, all, all these are important things. Having faith in God, uh, prayer and intercession is also very important. Uh, so, so you're you're doing a full course on prayer and intercession. Eh? So, all, all these are important. Now, when we're dealing with the situation, we must exercise faith. Faith is necessary. Prayer. Without faith is useless because Jesus said, you know, many places. I'll quote example Matthew 21, verse 22. Whatever you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. You know, so a prayer always has to be in faith. Prayer without faith is empty, is useless. Right? So we've got to have faith in God. And when you pray, you pray believing prayer. You pray with faith in God. It's not just, you know, making uh, lots of words before God. It has to come out of a heart of faith. But having said that, also understand that in some matters, prayer and intercession are very important, especially when it has to do with other people. So if, it, if I'm having faith for my own life situations, it, you know, so on, Faith is important, and usually just by faith you can deal with it. Because Jesus said, you know, you speak to the mountain, you tell the mountain to move, it will move, nothing will be impossible to you. So if it's a matter of your own life, your own life situation, thing, so you just exercise faith, you speak words of faith, things will happen. But if it is dealing with somebody else, maybe you're praying for the salvation of a, of a family member. Maybe you're praying for another person uh, to grow spiritually or to walk in the ways of God. That's where prayer and intercession is very important. And you have to pray in faith, of course. But prayer and intercession is dealing with what is affecting that person. Right? Um, so in a situation like that, intercession, prayer, becomes very important. Of course, all of it has to be done in faith. Right? So, Or when you're dealing with God, to work in your city, work in your nation, prayer and intercession becomes very important. Right. So my answer to the Surya is: if it's if it's concerning a personal matter, you're dealing with a life situation that's in your personal life, you just use your faith. Like Jesus spoke to the storm, the winds, the waves. He didn't even pray, right, uh, for that wind or the storm. He just spoke to it. He, you know, he spoke he and ministered to people that way. But he also had a strong life of prayer. So he would go away into the mountain. He would spend hours in prayer. And uh, when we are praying for people, when we're interceding for, when we're dealing with other people, that's where our prayer and intercession comes in. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Um, yeah. So. Um, all right, I think we've answered the question. Any, any other questions in class? Yes. Go ahead. 
Long question. Okay, try to make it short. Ask ask a question. It's okay. Go ahead. If there is a pastor or praying person. Sorry? There is a pastor, pastor or any praying person. There's a prayerful person, okay. Yeah. Another person is God sick anything. They have faith for receive healing. But the praying person have no faith. It's healing is happening or not happening. Okay. So let me try to understand, Francis. You're saying there's a sick person. There's a person who is praying a lot. And the sick person has faith. Is that what you said? The person who's sick has a lot of faith. But the person who is praying has doesn't have faith. So the question is? Healing happening or not? Or will the heal ha happen? Yeah. So uh, uh, I, I will answer it from from based on the Bible, because every situation will vary. Right. So the the the, the situation that Francis described is uh, there's a sick person who has faith in God, but there's a person who's praying who does not have faith in God. Will the sick person be healed? That's the question. I hope I understood correctly. Right. Okay. So. Francis, we know. So, what does the Bible say? The Bible says, example, Matthew chapter 9, verse 29. According to your faith, it will be done for you. According to your faith. So that's that's what God, that's what God looks at. So the sick person will receive according to their Faith. So if the person who, ha who is sick has faith in God, believes they will see the result, that they will be healed. Right? Now, uh, if the person who is praying, if he doesn't have faith, okay, the prayer is actually ineffective. Because remember James chapter 5, verse 15, 16 says, you know, about the elders, they have to pray in faith, for the prayer of faith will heal the sick. Right. So if they're not praying the prayer of faith, that prayer is ineffective, it's useless. So the prayer may be useless, but the, the person who's sick has faith in God, and through their faith in God, they will receive. Right? That's I'm giving a biblical answer. Now, in reality, the situations are so different because we don't know every what's in people's hearts and what they're going through. We don't know. But I'm just giving a Bible answer. Uh, in practice, we may see all kinds of things happen. Uh, which are different okay all right okay shall we move forward any more questions from our online students any questions are we all okay all right okay let's move forward to now what we're going to do for for a few weeks or for some time i, I don't know a few weeks but for some time is we're going to break things down that means okay you know i i, I get in, in the chapter 10 we talked about speaking your faith and and so on and so forth now we're going to get into different aspects of uh, exercising faith and, and so on so we're going to talk about each piece like when i talk about confession we talk when we talk about endurance now uh, we're going to talk about how to uh, you know uh, pray and receive various parts piece 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 by piece right we're going to talk about it so in chapter 11 we talk about how confession releases faith. You see, one of the things God, see, God has designed us in such a way that we are able to express what is in our heart through the words of our mouth. So what is in our heart? Is expressed through the words we speak and what we will see in Scripture both the Old Testament and the New Testament is that our words are very important the words we speak are very important and God has used or God has instructed us that our words are a vehicle or a way to express or release our faith, our words. 
the word you speak. It's a way to release your faith. So if we, we need to understand that. And we need to use it. For example, some person is sick person comes to you. So what is your problem? Says, I have a tumor. Okay. How are you going to get the tumor out? Huh? You're not, you and I are not doctors. We're not going to cut the stomach and pull it off. We can't do that. How are you going to deal with the tumor? Well, Jesus said something. He said, speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain. So you can, even, you know, mountain basically represents some material thing, something in our natural realm. And he said, if you have faith, you can speak to the mountain. So that's why you can say to the tumor, tumor, in the name of Jesus, I command you to leave or I command you to dry up and disappear whatever you know you give you can speak to it now some people who don't understand this they listen to you so gone this person has gone lost his mind he's talking to the tumor right but they don't understand spiritual truth that's in the Bible but in the Bible for example Jesus he spoke to things. And if you just turn with me to Luke chapter 4, and I, I, I'm sure that you are familiar with many examples in the Bible, but I'll just point us to one example. So if you turn with me to Luke chapter 4, please, and please look at verses 38 and 39. Luke chapter 4. Uh, this is not in the notes. I'm just taking a little side journey. We'll come back to the notes. Uh, Luke chapter 4, 38 and 39. It says that he arose from the synagogue and entered Simon's house. But Simon's wife's mother was sick with a high fever. And they made request of him concerning her. So this is Simon's wife's mother. She had high fever. I don't know. Maybe those days they may not have had thermometers. But maybe it was 102, 103, 104. High fever. Huh? What did Jesus do? Verse 39. So he stood over her and rebuked what? The fever. Jesus is speaking to what? He's speaking to the fever. It says he rebuked the fever and it left her. That means you can imagine Jesus going, you can just imagine, Jesus going to Peter's. Mother-in-law, she's lying in the bed, high fever. He goes and says, fever, leave. What is this? He's talking to the fever. He's rebuking the fever. What is this? But Jesus rebuked the fever. And what does it say? It says, and it left her. See, he used words. And he spoke to what? He spoke to the fear. Notice he did not pray. So again, we, are, we, know, we go back to one of those questions. Should we use faith? Should we pray? In this case, it was not about prayer. It was about exercising faith. It was about speaking to the fever. Right? He spoke to the fever. So you can speak to the sickness, whatever that sickness, speak to it. Words, you're speaking words to that sickness. You speak to the tumor, you speak to whatever that condition, speak to it. Tell it to go. Rebuked it, meaning they saying, go, leave. And she was healed. So I'm just giving one example. You look at the ministry of Jesus some for the blind, you know, he's a, or the deaf person. He said, be opened. He's, he's speaking to the ear. They're, they're deaf. He's speaking to the ear. He says, be open. Or to the dumb, be open for the, the person who cannot speak. Speak plainly. So, God has given us this. 
So use your words. Use your words to do work. Spiritual. This is spiritual. Right? So we must understand that words are important in the exercise of faith. And that's what we are going to spend time on in this lesson. Lesson number 11. Now, the word confession. Um, there are different um, contexts in which the word confession is used uh, in the New Testament. We see uh, we have to confess Jesus as Lord of our lives for salvation. We have to confess sin to receive forgiveness of sins. The word confession is the Greek word homologia. Right? And it is really made up of two words. So homologia is made up of two words. Homo means same. Homo means same. And logia means to say. So homo, same. Logia means to say. Logos, or say. And therefore, it simply means, homologia simply means to say the same thing. To say the same thing. Right? So the word confession means to say the same thing. So if I'm talking about confession of sin, I say the same thing. That means I say I have sinned. Right? Suppose I got angry. And I say the same thing. I say, God, I got angry with somebody. I shouted at somebody. God, please forgive me. I should not have done that. Confession of sin. I am I'm saying the same thing of my sin. That God, this is what I did. Wrong thing I did. Please forgive me. That is confession of sin. Saying the same thing. Confession of Jesus as Lord. That means we are saying the same thing. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and he has ascended to heaven. So we are saying the same thing. That is confession of Christ as Lord. And Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father who is in heaven. That means if you say Jesus is Lord, then he will say, that boy, that girl, that person is, I am his Lord. He is my son, my daughter, before the Father. Right? That means you are acknowledging Jesus. Jesus is acknowledging you. Confession. So Jesus, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before the Father. He will say the same thing about you and me. So the word confession is a very simple word. It simply means say the same thing. Say the same thing. That's what it means to confess. Now, the Bible also teaches us that we have to confess our faith. Okay. Now, we have a full book uh, called uh, Speak Your Faith. Uh, you can download the PDF for free, but uh, the book will be printed. You know, uh, we, we just had our printing, so hopefully it'll be printed in You'll get a copy of it. Uh, but that book, Speak Your Faith, basically has uh, scriptures from Genesis to Revelation that, are, that teaches on speaking your faith. So you can go through the whole book. But uh, uh, here we're going to only talk, re reference a few verses, right? A few verses. So we see this confession of faith throughout the Bible. It's not just in the New Testament or only in the Old Testament. It's throughout the Bible. The people say the same thing they say what they believe that is confession of your faith say what you believe and of course you and i believe god you and i believe the word of god so we must say what we believe right? so look at some examples in joshua chapter one uh, and i've not put this on but joshua chapter one god is telling joshua since he's instructing joshua and he says, Joshua, this book, this book, and in the, in, at that time, uh, they just had, you know, the, the books of Moses, the first five books. And God is telling Joshua, 
Joshua chapter 1. Sorry, I, I turned to Deuteronomy. Okay, Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. He says, This book of the law shall not leave your mouth, depart from your mouth. It won't leave this book, the words of this book shouldn't leave your mouth, should keep it in your mouth. But you meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. But then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. So God is saying, let the words of this book become the words of your mouth. Let it always be in your mouth. Don't let it leave your mouth. Meaning, in other words, to put it in simple, simple language, always say what my word has said. This book, don't let it leave your mouth. Meaning, let the words of this book be the words of your always say you always speak my words and you meditate in it you carefully do it observe to do and then you will make your way prosperous you will have good success okay so you follow my word you will have good success now i want to I want us to look at a very interesting passage in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 11 to 14. Because why I say this is very interesting is because this same passage from Deuteronomy chapter 13 is quoted by the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 10. Very interesting that the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 10 is. Is quoting this passage from Deuteronomy chapter 30. So we're going to read both. That means what God taught his people in the Old Testament is still being given to believers in the New Testament. This particular truth. Okay. So what did God tell his people in the Old Testament? Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 11 to 14. Let me read it, please. For this commandment, which I command you today, is not too mysterious for you, nor is it far off. So God is saying, look, my word, which I'm giving you today, it's not mysterious. It's not something you don't understand, and neither is it far away from you. Verse 12, it is not in heaven that you should say, who will ascend into heaven for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it. That means God is saying, I didn't keep my word in heaven away from you so that somebody superman has to come <laughs> bring that word down to you no i'm not kept it away from you right and then verse 13 nor is it beyond the sea that you should say who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it so god is not saying look i didn't put my word far away from you in some other place that you have to go across the seas to go and get it so what god is saying is look my word is not far from you. It's not so far away up in heaven or far and some across the ocean. It's not far away from you. But what he's saying, verse 13 or 14. But the word is very near you. The word which God has spoken is very near you. Where is it? In your mouth and in your heart, that you may do it. So God is saying, hello, my word is not far away. It's not in heaven so far that you have to go to heaven to get it. It is not far away across the ocean. You have to go across and get it. No, my word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your It's in your mouth. It's in your heart. So that you can live by it, follow it, do it. So that is what God told his people in the Old Testament. Very interesting. Let's go to Romans chapter 10. We'll uh, explain this to me close. Romans chapter 10. The Apostle Paul, uh, 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 the book of Romans is, 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 an, is a powerful epistle. 
So in your third year, you will be studying uh, the book of Romans verse by verse. Beautiful, beautiful study. Uh, you will understand the book of Romans. It's the is uh, the more you know. It's it's. I, I shouldn't say it's the best, but this book, Epistle of Romans, is uh, the highest do, from a doctrine standpoint, from a teaching standpoint. It's one of you know Paul the Apostle's best writing. Of course, the epistles talk about Christian living. But Romans is talking about Christian doctrine, you know, right from sin, salvation. It teaches us so many things. Powerful, powerful. You'll study it in your third year. But in Romans chapter 10, very interesting. The Apostle Paul is quoting from Deuteronomy 30. And then he's explaining to us how to practice it. So, so very interesting. Romans 10. Let's read it. We will read from verse 6. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. So he's talking about speaking. And he's saying you have to speak like this. That means people who have received righteousness by faith, they talk like this. Okay. So you and I, have we received righteousness by faith? Yes. So we are supposed to talk like this because he's saying, for the righteousness of faith, of faith speaks like this. Do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. Verse 8. But what does it say? That means what does the scripture say? The word is near you. In your mouth and in your heart. So he's saying, so he's quoting Deuteronomy 30, verse 14. The word is near you in your heart and in your mouth. For what? That is the word of faith which we preach. So, which word is he referring to? See, in the Old Testament, God was referring to the book of the law, and he was saying, that word is very close to you. But now Paul is referring to the word of faith. That means the message of faith in Christ and everything that Paul is preaching. Right? So whatever Paul has been preaching, the word of faith, the, 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 the word that brings faith, the message that about Jesus Christ, what he has done for us on the cross and all of that. So this message that produces faith, that word is very close to you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. But what must you do? Next verse. So he doesn't stop there. Verse 9. That if you confess with your mouth. So the word is in your mouth. For what? For you to confess. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in your heart. So the word is in your heart. For what? To believe it. And believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Look at verse 10. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So Paul is quoting from the Old Testament, and then he's explaining how it works in the life of the believer. He says the word, the word of faith, that is what the message of faith, the word which brings faith, it's in your mouth and in your heart he says with the heart man believes with the mouth confession is made what is confession say the same thing so word is in your mouth you confess the word you got to say the same thing. say what the word says say the same thing with the heart man believes the word is in your heart so what do you believe? You believe the word. And then he also tells us what believing does. With the heart, one believes unto righteousness. That means believing puts you in right standing with God. You come into the right place. To be righteous means to be in right standing with God. You're in the right place before God. 
So when you believe in your heart, you believe the word, it puts you in a place, right place, before God to receive. Right? With a heart, man believes, verse 10, with a heart, one believes unto righteousness, or resulting in righteousness. So when you believe with your heart, what is the result? You are in the right place, you're standing in the right place before God. Then what happens? Next, verse 10. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. That means now when you confess, it results in you experiencing God's work in your life. That's the salvation. So two things. When you, the word is in, so let's break it down. The word of God. The word which brings faith. Word of faith. It's in your heart and it's in your mouth. So, if you and I want God to work in our lives, we shouldn't say, oh, God is so far away in heaven. Who will go and bring him? Or, oh, Jesus died. Who's going to bring him up? No, don't talk like that. So Paul is saying, don't talk like that. The righteousness of, of faith speaks like this. This is how we're supposed to speak. Speak according to the word. Because the word is in your heart and it's in your mouth. With your heart, you believe. You believe the word. When you believe the word, it puts you in righteousness, puts you in right place before God. And with your mouth, confession is made unto salvation. That means when you confess with your mouth, after having believed in your heart, you're in the right place, now you're confessing, then you experience the work of God in your life, salvation. So, example. We'll just mention a few examples and we'll take questions. Suppose a believer is sick. Suppose you're sick. Don't say, oh... Who will bring Jehovah Rapha from heaven and heal to, for him to heal me? My God is Jehovah Rapha, but he's in heaven. How will he come and heal me? Or maybe Jehovah Rapha didn't rise up from the dead. <laughs> Who's going to raise him up? Don't speak like that. Because he has already given you his word. His word says, I am the God who heals you. His word says, Himself took our sicknesses and bore our diseases. His word says, By His stripes we are healed. So the word is near you. What must you do? You believe that word in your heart. When you believe that word in your heart, it puts you in righteousness, in the right place before God to receive. Then you confess that word with your mouth. From a believing heart, you confess that word. It brings salvation. It brings God's work of healing into your life. Confession is made unto salvation, resulting in salvation. You got it? Or let's say there's a need, a financial need. Don't say, who will bring Jehovah Jireh from heaven? Or is Jehovah Jireh dead? How will he meet my need? No, the word is near you. It's in your heart. It's in your mouth. What is the word? My God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory through Christ. Jesus, God is able to make all grace abound toward me, that I always, having all sufficiency in all things, will abound to every good work. The Lord is my shepherd, I will not be in want. The word is near me. It's in my heart. It's in my oh. It's in my heart for me to believe it. With the heart, man believes. So you believe that word. When you believe that word, it puts you in righteousness before God. You're in the right place to receive now. Because you believed it. And out of a believing heart, confession is made. That means you must speak and declare, My God shall supply all my needs. 
the Lord my God makes all grace abound toward me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not. So confession is made unto salvation. I mean, you see the result of God's working in your life. Your needs will be met. You understand? So, we will pause here. We'll, uh, let's see, any questions? Let me check the online class. Any questions? We have five minutes. All right, any questions from uh, online class students? Any questions? We have five more minutes, a few more minutes here. Yes. Sorry, we have? Great faith, okay. Mm. Mm. So, Ren's question is, if we have great faith, and people think that, oh, this person is very proud, or, you know, things like that. So one is, see, we don't all, um, we don't have to speak our faith in front of people all the time. It's very important, and we will continue this. You know, we, it's very important, first of all, to speak our faith before God. Because the Bible says, Hebrews 3, 1, next class, we'll talk about it. Jesus, Jesus is the high priest of our confession. So we need to make our confession before Jesus. Secondly, not everybody understands faith. So what you do, keep, keep quiet before them. Because they don't understand. They'll think you lost your mind. <laughs> They'll think something wrong. So before them, just keep quiet. Now, Jesus put it like this, and it, it sounds hard, but Jesus said, don't throw your pearls before swine, before pigs. In other words, this simple interpretation is, <laughs> don't, these valuable things that you have, spiritual things, don't put it in front of people who cannot understand it. They'll only laugh at us. So why even bother? So don't do that. Right? So most important, put you, you and I, we speak our faith before God, before Christ, because he's a high priest. And a few people who understand our faith. You know, uh, I'll just mention this verse. First Timothy 6, 12, Paul tells Timothy, hold fast your confession which you have confessed before many witnesses. That means these witnesses are, of course, be other believers, people who understand. So before people who understand, then you share your faith. They will support you. They'll encourage you. But if they don't understand, don't waste your time. Don't say anything. Just keep quiet. Otherwise, they will think something is wrong with us. So don't do that. And if they misunderstand us, don't worry. because. They don't understand where we are coming from. We are coming from faith in God and His Word. They don't understand that. So don't worry about us. Okay? All right. We are going to close. Uh, one minute we have. Um, okay, let's close. Maybe I'll just pray today. Yes. Go on. You're saying sometimes um, uh, if we be, oh, as faith increases, we also become proud. Uh, some, so we have to avoid that, you know. Um, uh, just don't worry about, I mean, uh, sorry, we should watch our own hearts, our own lives, that we don't become proud. So we, you know, because pride can uh, hinder the exercise of our faith if we let pride come in. Sorry, what were you going to say? Hmm. How to make sure that we don't let pride come in? Hmm. Okay, let us answer that next time. Okay, just remind me, next class. We will start with your question, okay? So, uh, Vimal asked a question. I uh, didn't have time to answer. I was just thinking about it. But you asked me, 
next class we'll start tomorrow. okay okay um let's just close father we thank you for this time of learning and we pray that every word spoken lord will be sealed and blessed in our hearts in jesus name amen god bless you everyone thanks for being on the class okay take your quick break and please get ready for your next class thank you